apologize for not making a video in the last little while. Uh, life's been a little bit crazy since about August. Lots of projects on the go and stuff. Um, but I finally found some time to sit down and make a video. Uh, so today I have some tools that I acquired from uh, Daygrad Tools on Etsy. Uh, they're a company that makes reproductions of uh, everything from the Roman period all the way through high medieval um, and some modern stuff too, um, but reproductions of all that stuff um, tools wise. And they're a pretty great company. Um, and so the things I bought, I guess I'll start with uh, a little spoon, little spoon knife. Uh, this one is a right hand away. Uh, I realized after buying it that I probably will also need the left hand away so that I can carve towards myself uh, in my right hand. But this thing's pretty awesome uh, because you can use it in a number of grips to, to carve out the bowls of spoons. Um, it came pretty sharp, uh, but I did have to put my own edge on it and take off some of the, the fire scale off the, the bowl so that it would slide through the wood a little easier. Um, I did burn, I did burnish the handle myself. Um, they come with this kind of raw uh, ash or oak handle. I think this one's oak. Um, and the, their their site says that the handles come in ash and beech. This this one to me looks like oak, but I could be wrong. Um, eh, nice little tool. Uh, not that expensive. Uh, so getting a set of them is not so uh, so bad. I believe this one was for um, it was listed as uh, Viking or Saxon spoon knife, uh, but it's a pretty great little old tool. This guy, this is a scorp. Um, it's a big two-handled one or two-handed one. They have uh, some that are smaller. This one is amazing. Uh, it allows you to, to hollow out things like this very quickly and easily um, with very, very limited effort. Uh, and it's a lot quieter than using a gouge. Um, you know, I'm doing this here in, in my apartment and excess hammering is not something that the, the neighbors appreciate. So this, uh, this little scorp worked out well. And if I'm not mistaken, this one is based off a of find from Novgorod. Um, so it's a pretty decent little thing. Uh, this one too had to, um, sharpen a little bit just to get it up to, to good enough to, to carve on this pine. Uh, they do say on the site that they're not really intended for use on kiln dried wood. Um, it's just too hard, um, and too, uh, too hard for the, the carbon content of the steel. But that's true to the the um, archaeology as well, the history of these, um, because the ones in period wouldn't have been used on kiln dried wood because they didn't kiln dry wood. Um, now, I think on the pine it worked perfectly fine, uh, even though it's just a, a two by six, um, and it, it didn't really dull it at all. But I think if I was using ash or something, uh, or maple, certainly hard maple, the, this tool just wouldn't be up to the job of, of cutting into that if it was kiln dried. Um, if it was air dried, then it has a slightly higher moisture content. Um, I think it would be perfectly fine. Um, yeah, I, I highly recommend this. It's also pretty affordable. Um, I can't even I can't remember exact prices or anything, but um, I also bought a set of three chisels that are based on finds from Novgorod, and. When in this set you can buy, or uh, you, uh, you get, <laughs> in this set you get them, and they come with the chisel uh, that is to mount it in a handle, and the furl to go on it, um, and it comes with two, two straight chisels, and one that's got a curve on the front. Uh, I haven't really used the, uh, the straight chisels. Um, mostly because my, my one complaint, uh, with all of these tools was that the edges on the straight chisels, uh, you know, when I got it, 
it was ground on an angle like that and uh, wasn't particularly sharp and there was a burr on it and all kinds of stuff so I had to actually go through a lot of effort with the limited tools that I had at the time to, to sharpen them and then I eventually took them to um, a shop that we were using for a crafting day with the Viking group that I'm with and used uh, a bench grinder and a, um, a buffing wheel to be able to, to get them up to an acceptable sharpness. Um, but I don't know, that's, that's just maybe me being nitpicky or whatever. Um, the bonus to that is it did allow me to put the edge that I want on it and not, you know, just relying on a factory edge. Um, uh, but I have used this one a fair amount. Um, that's what I, I started hollowing this. Um, and it's, it's actually, it surprised me. I, I was wondering why you would want a curve like that on a chisel. Um, I know that it increases the, the surface area and also the shearing because of the, the curve. <coughs> Excuse me. But, um, what I didn't realize is that it almost acts as a, as a gouge that will do things on the flat a lot easier. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty decent tool. Um, I do recommend getting these. Uh, you will have to probably put a bit of work in to, to you know, do the edge and maybe um, true up some of the faces if you don't, don't want it to be quite as uh, roughly forged. Um, and you'll have to put them in handles yourselves. But it does it does make a, a difference. Um, they are quite decent tools. Um, I do have a couple other tools that I got at uh, a store here in Canada called Lee Valley. Um, they're sort of a, a tool supplier of general woodworking tools and some leatherworking tools and stuff. Um, and it's just things that, that I would totally recommend. Um, I, I got this carving knife. Um, it's not really for use on site because it is a very, very modern tool. Um, but for what it is, it's, a ba it's basically just a little, uh, a little whittling knife and everything. But the amount of work that this knife can do for the price, it's, it's only like $20, um, is amazing. Uh, again, I burnished the handle. Um, it comes with a, an old candle like that. I think the, bl the brand is uh, KST, and they're made in Germany. Uh, for the price, the steel is, is really good. It holds an edge really well. You can put an edge on it very, very easily um, and get it up to, you know, shaving sharp, razor sharp, very, very easily. Um, very limited work. Uh, so, yeah, I, I do recommend getting one of these if you do any kind of uh, whittling or carving. Um, again, it's it's for off-site use, but it... Uh, it allows you to, to do a lot that you can't do with, with a bigger knife or something like that. Um, <clears throat> and again, you know, most woodworkers have their own opinions on uh, the type of knife they use, even the, <coughs> the shape of the blade that they prefer. Uh, I personally just like these ones. Um, the other one, the other tools that I found that were really cool um, and useful were... Baco scrapers, uh, card scrapers, cabinet scrapers, uh, they are fantastic, uh, just for smoothing everything out. Um, I like Baco, uh, partially because I'm, I'm biased towards, uh, Swedish products and, uh, Scandinavian products in general, it seems. <laughs> uh, but this is a, a very easy, uh, easy, easy scraper to put a, uh, a burr on the edge of. Um, and it does a fantastic job. Uh, I also like the fact that they, they actually take the time to, or they, they take the expense to include a plastic sheath for it so that you don't wreck your, uh, your scraper when you put it into a toolbox or something. That's just a, an, an extra thing that makes a difference. The other one was I found this little uh, spoon scraper. And it is brilliant for getting into all kinds of tight little little things. You know, the bowls of spoons, um, the inside of bowl, uh, like a, an actual bowl, um, the insides of little cups, things like that, you can get in there and, and scrape out some of the roughness that sometimes occurs 
um, either when you're carving it or you're turning it, um, you can kind of you know, scrape it out. Um, especially if you're uh, turning something on a pole lathe and it's got that little nub in the bottom, you can use one of the, the spoon knives or the, uh, the scorp to get inside and scrape that out and then use the scraper to smooth that section. And this, this is just a handy little, little tool to have. Um, and all of those can be found at a, a, sto uh, it's a store like um, uh, like Lee Valley. Um, I think there's another one that's in Canada called Busy Bee Tools, and I think they probably have the same products or equivalent. Um, other than that, I, I, I don't know where you'd be able to get them, but any kind of woodworking supply place. Um, and these guys, I think you can even get at Home Depot. So... Yeah, they're worth they're worth having in your toolbox, um, just for just for finish work off site to make things to that little bit more polished for display or or for uh, personal use. Um, yeah, so that's just my little uh, review of some of the tools that I've I've purchased. Uh, in the next little bit, I hope you're making more videos. Um, I have uh, a friend that, that got some more gear. Um, he got a, a sword from uh, Heron Armory, which is an amazing, amazing sword. Uh, he got a Yermambu helmet um, that has the Aventail and, and the full thing. Uh, hopefully he'll let me borrow them to, to review. Uh, I have an axe up here um, that's on the list of things that I should probably review. Um, yeah, there's a there's a few things coming. Um, I know in the, the last video, the the mustard eggs one, I said that I'd be the next video would be uh, doing gravid locks. Uh, I did record that, but I ended up losing the footage just because of an error that happened. Um, so I'm hoping to do that one again. Um, I'm also this this I'm working on a project uh, making a bowed lyre. Um, this one is in the form of a finish Yuhiko, um, and hopefully I'll be able to make a video on that once it's done. Um, I started it without filming anything, so it's a little bit late to do that. Um, the other thing I hope to make some videos on uh, are pack frames. Um, I was tired of carrying my gear around in like a duffel bag and breaking my back doing that, uh, so I decided to make a, a pack frame, so I did a bunch of research. Um, and what I found is that there were sort of two two designs used. Um, at least that's like the the two two main designs. Obviously, there's probably a bunch of other things. Um, and this one was the most easily available to me at the time. Um, and it's based on a design that is still used uh, today by some people in Russia. Um, and I thought it was pretty cool because it reminded me of uh, the the Roycroft pack frame that uh, you know you're talking about in uh, Boy Scouts and stuff like that sometimes. And it's uh, that is made of you know three uh, or two two arm length pe pieces of wood that are lashed together in the top, and then a bar, a bar at the bottom that's as wide as your hips that's lashed on. Um, and this is just sort of a similar idea, except it's made with a crook, obviously. Um, and these are pretty cool because you can actually tie on a tie on ropes and tow a sled behind you and stuff. But I will we'll go into details with on this in a future video. Um, the other type is people call it the uh, the Otzi uh, style because Otzi the Iceman had a um, had a pack frame that was similar, um, but it's it's one that's been used in Norway for a very very long time, um, where you have a bottom bar at least as wide as your hips. Um, I prefer a little wider so you can attach the sled to. Um, but you have that, and then you've got uh, basically a big bent wood arch that goes over that's as tall as your back, um, and then uh, a crossbar on the top to attach the straps and a uh, maybe a crossbar in the middle to secure the load a little better. Uh, but I hope to be building one of those soon, um, just as soon as the, the weather starts to cooperate more and I can actually get out to um, harvest the wood that I need. Um, but that, that's something for a, for a future video. Um, and 
if you guys want a really detailed video on it, um, maybe a uh, video on the construction of that that uh, bent wood one. Um, I just just comment in the in the description and I'll do that. Um, so yeah, uh, thanks for watching, um, and I hope to be, like I said, making more videos shortly. <laughs>